Hi, and welcome to Technically Speaking. Today, we're exploring nitrous oxide and how to use it to make power. In order to make power, our engines need air. The more air we can get into them, whether it be by increasing compression and efficiency or by adding a supercharger or turbocharger, the more power we can get out of them. But that's not really specific enough. It's actually the oxygen and nitrogen in the air charge that we need. The air that you and I breathe and our engines breathe is made up of about 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen and a 1% mix of other stuff. It's the oxygen and nitrogen in the air that we're interested in. Oxygen's the stuff that we ignite, and the nitrogen's the stuff that expands when it gets hot and pushes the pistons down. The more oxygen and nitrogen we can fill the engine with, the more liquid fuel we can add, and the more power we'll make. So, why don't we just inject pure oxygen? Well, firstly, pure oxygen is pretty dangerous, and while it's not flammable itself, it does act as an oxidizer and make things a whole lot worse if a fire is present. Secondly, if you inject pure oxygen, you're displacing the nitrogen that we need to expand under the heat of combustion to make power. This results in ridiculously hot combustion temperatures, but with a lot less expansion, resulting in less torque and less power. The best way to make more power is to make the intake charge as dense with nitrogen and oxygen as possible. Enter nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, which is commonly referred to as nitrous or the company name NOS, is a chemical compound made up of two parts nitrogen and one part oxygen with the chemical formula N2O. It's stored as a liquid above about 735 psi and it's used in our racing applications at about 950 psi of pressure. Temperature plays a huge role in the bottle pressure and it's something that we need to be monitoring and controlling in order to use it consistently and safely. The pressure of the bottle will increase by nearly 100 psi per 5 degrees celsius until we get it up to around 27 degrees celsius. Then, small changes in the bottle temperature can significantly increase the bottle pressure. For example, if the bottle pressure changes from 27 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, you can expect to see a rise in pressure from 850 PSI to 950 PSI. And this is important to know because a change in pressure makes a big change in flow and a big change in nitrous flow means in a, a big change in the engine's fueling and ignition requirements for its newfound power and charge. While nitrous oxide is making its way into the engine, two very magical things happen. First, it comes out of the fogger from very high pressure into very low pressure. And because of thermal expansion, it becomes very cold. This reduces the engine's natural intake charge, making it more dense simply by cooling it. The second thing that happens is that it needs to heat up. When it gets hotter than about 300 degrees Celsius, the nitrous splits into two nitrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The oxygen atom aids in the combustion event that's occurring with the engine's fuel, while the nitrogen hangs out with all the other nitrogen in the cylinder and it expands when it gets hot, pushing the piston down. This is why you may have heard of nitrous oxide being referred to as a chemical supercharger, because the end result of using it is more of a dense cylinder charge, much like a boosted engine. There are some downsides to using nitrous. The tank doesn't last forever and it can become expensive to use depending on what part of the world you're from. A 10 pound bottle or four and a half kilos will cost you about 150 Australian dollars to have filled and you can expect to make around 100 horsepower for about 100 seconds out of one bottle. Breaking that down, it means that you'll be using 0.1 pounds or 45 grams of nitrous per second per 100 horsepower. Bigger kits will use more obviously, smaller kits will use less, but you get the idea. This makes nitrous more of a common choice on drag style cars and less common on circuit cars because physically storing 10 or 20 pounds of nitrous as well as performing refills during a race would be a bit of a challenge. So one of the benefits that nitrous has over supercharging or turbocharging is that it's relatively straightforward with not that many components needed and most of the fitment is pretty straightforward. So first let's go through the components we're gonna need in order to do a single nitrous fogger kit. A nitrous bottle, 
a braided line that's going to go from the nitrous bottle up through the car into the nitrous solenoid. If it's going to be a wet system, meaning that the nitrous control strategy is controlled without the engine management system, we would need a fuel solenoid. If it's going to be a dry style nitrous system, we don't need the fuel solenoid. We'll go into a bit more detail in this in a little bit. We've got a relay that's used if the ECU can't fire the nitrous solenoid directly, we use a relay to control that solenoid. We've got other videos talking about what relays do, so they might be worth checking up on before you go to install your nitrous kit. If we move further across, after the nitrous solenoid has opened or closed in order to let the nitrous and the fuel into the engine, we've then got some braided lines that connect the nitrous solenoid into the nitrous fogger, which is this thing here. Think of this kind of like the injector where we've got our fuel and our nitrous are going into the top of this thing. So this thing will determine how much nitrous actually goes into the engine through the jet size that's supplied here in the kit as well. Over here further, we've got specifically got an injection plate. So this helps where the nitrous fogger is actually already put in this adapter plate that sits behind a throttle body on an LS style engine. These are super convenient. If they make one to suit your car, this is pretty straightforward because you don't need to be drilling and welding holes for the bung. All you need to do is just put the sandwich plate in and then you've got a spot for your nitrous and your fuel to go straight in. The next thing that we've got over here is a purge valve kit. The purge valve is the thing that purges all of the air out of the long line. So after you've turned the bottle on, we then do a purge, which would essentially purge all the air out of the charge line so that as soon as we hit the gas, we actually get nitrous coming straight out. So to explain how this actually works in practice, I've found a V8 manifold that's got two stages of nitrous injection as a wet system, meaning that fuel is also coming in through mechanical solenoids as well as being electronically fuel injected. So this thing starts by having a 10 pound bottle that feeds this line, which in turn comes up and feeds two nitrous solenoids. This nitrous solenoid feeds four fogger inlets on this side, other nitrous solenoid feeds four fogger inlets on the other side here. That one kit is 400 horsepower. So 400 horsepower across the eight cylinders of this engine. Then another 10 pound bottle is added down here. Instead of going into a different fogger, the way this particular one's set up is that second kit actually goes into the other side of this nitrous fogger. So we've got 400 horsepower in total coming through one side of the fogger, another 400 horsepower in total coming through the other side of the fogger. And that's controlled in total by four nitrous control solenoids. We've also got a fuel solenoid here. So fuel comes in through here, then goes through each of the foggers that are mounted next to the fuel injectors to spray fuel in when the nitrous is active. This is known as a wet system because when the nitrous is enabled, the fuel is also turned on through these foggers. Uh, wet systems are becoming a little less common now that our engine management systems have got so much control over our fueling and so many advanced nitrous control strategies. We can control the amount of fuel that's added to the normal fuel injectors. This drops that complexity of having that whole fuel circuit through here altogether. So there's plenty of connections and plumbing lines that are no longer required when we turn this into a dry system. And that's what we're going to be talking about now. There's a bunch of different ways to get the nitrous into your engine, starting with very easy to very complicated. And it all depends on how much nitrous you need to get into the engine and how available, how much space you've got to be able to put it in. So the first and the most simple type is a single fogger. So we'll use this as the example where a single fogger would spray just before the throttle body. One fogger would be in, that would then get through and get distributed along with the airflow of the engine, in, through, and away you go. So that's single fogger. The next style would be as a sandwich plate style system where what would happen is there would actually be a sandwich plate that would be sort of 10 mil or, or half an inch thick, something like that, that would go between the inlet manifold and the throttle body. Then our nitrous and our fuel line would get attached to that nice and simple. So that way there's no holes drilling, there's nothing like that. And that sandwich plate would then have the nitrous and the fuel fogger in it already. The next injection is the bar or the plate style method. Thing looks a lot like a fuel rail. It'll sit just in front of the throttle body. There's a whole bunch of holes drilled in it. They're all metered size, of course. 
Then we've got our nitrous and our fuel going in through one of our metering jets that then sprays across the top of the throttle, go straight in and you're away. Lastly, the one that we all talk about, direct port nitrous, which is what this manifold has. It's got one nitrous fogger per cylinder. In this case, we just happen to be feeding two stages of nitrous in one fogger, but typically you would have one nitrous in and you have one fuel into the single jet. Now we've all seen a car that comes up to the start line and purges the nitrous, the big spray out the hood that looks amazing. What's it actually for? Well, it actually does have a very important use. What happens when you fill the nitrous line, you connect it, you turn the bottle on, there's a whole bunch of air in the lines and we wanna purge that air out of these lines and actually fill them with nitrous. So the way to fix that or the way to, to prevent us directing just air into the engine for the first second or so of our spray is by purging the air out. So this is how we do it. We fit a nitrous purge solenoid as close as we can to the nitrous solenoid. We manually trigger that and no nitrous gets sprayed into the engine at all. All we're doing is purging the air that's in the nitrous line, in the nitrous fittings, all the way up to the solenoid. And we'll press that purge button a couple of times until we see a good spray come out of the purge tube. That tells us that the whole line is full of nitrous and as soon as we actually hit one of the kits, we're ready to go. This is really important because what happens if the racer takes off, the nitrous kit enables, then air comes through the line into the engine the thing's already got fuel. So whether it's a dry kit or a wet kit, fuel, the amount of fuel we need to support the, the power that nitrous is gonna make is going into the engine and we would get a huge rich spot before the engine would get the nitrous and take off. In order to support the power that the nitrous is gonna make in your engine, we need to supply the thing with fuel and we need to make sure that we've got enough fuel system in the car to support that power level. It starts with the fuel pump. We need to make sure that that's up to scratch and that it can supply enough liters per hour of the fuel in order to support the power the engine makes while it's got nitrous going. If it's a dry kit, that means that all of that fueling needs to go through the standard fuel injector that you've got in the car. That means that we need to make sure that the fuel injector is sized correctly so that when there's no nitrous, the thing is running at a particular duty cycle. As soon as we add nitrous, we need to make sure that the fuel injector can actually flow the amount of fuel we need in order to get our desired air to fuel ratios and that the injector isn't stuck at 100% injector duty cycle or isn't wide open and not able to flow enough fuel. If it's a wet system, that means that the extra fuel needed to support the nitrous does not go through the normal fuel injectors. It means that we've got an individual fogger, one or in this case, one per cylinder, in order to supply the amount of fuel that the engine's gonna need when the nitrous hits. How this works is pretty simple. The fuel that normally goes through our fuel rails is T-pieced off into our fuel control solenoid. Once that fuel control solenoid opens, we've then got a path to either the fuel single fogger or in this case, our individual foggers for each cylinder that'll then spray the fuel through. These are also metered in the way that there's a little pill under each one of these that changes the amount of fuel that goes to each cylinder. So we can do very rough individual cylinder trimming using the mechanical system like this. Or if it was the dry system, we can do individual cylinder trimming by adjusting how much fuel goes through each fuel injector. It goes without saying that if you're gonna do something like this and add two 400 horsepower kits to your engine, stock internal components aren't gonna cut it. If you're adding sort of 100 horsepower, 125, 150 horsepower kits, most factory engines can cop something like that. Definitely best speaking to your tuner or doing a bit of research to see how strong your particular engine is. But things like having stronger connecting rods, forged pistons, upgraded head studs, uh, head gaskets, all this sort of stuff, exactly the same rules as if you were supercharging or turbocharging the engine. You would need to build it to the horsepower that you're gonna be making. When you're spraying the nitrous into your engine, one of the things that you'll also need to take care of is the ignition system. You'll need to make sure you've got enough spark energy to be able to burn this stuff. You don't want any misfiring, which could result in backfires out the inlet manifold, in turn, damaging butterflies, blowing bonnets off, all sorts of fun stuff. So make sure the ignition system's up to scratch by just making sure you've got new leads, 
Um, spark plugs are very important. Make sure you've got the right heat range spark plug. As a rule of thumb, typically we go colder on the spark plug. Every sort of 50 to 100 horsepower we're making, one range colder in the spark plug. Again, this is something that is uh, you can find with experience on different styles of engines and talking to your tuner to find out exactly which range they would recommend depending on how much nitrous you're putting into the engine. Also making sure you've got the right ignition system in the way of either having an upgraded ignition coil and ignition module or a capacitive discharge style ignition system if it's a huge setup like this. So once your single fogger nitrous kit's installed, what, what can you expect? Um, some pretty amazing results. This little thing that I'm holding here is our nitrous jet. Basically what this thing is, it's just a tiny little metering jet. It's got a hole drilled down the middle of it and that hole is the thing that determines how much nitrous passes through the jet and into the engine. This is the way that we can say, oh, okay, we've got a 200 horsepower or 100 horsepower or whatever the case in the jet. It's all about this tiny little jet with the hole drilled in it. So to give you some examples, a single jet with a 33 thousandths of an inch hole in the middle, I'm using thousandths of an inch because that's how everybody refers to these things, makes about 40 horsepower at the wheels. If the jet size was a bit bigger at about 41 thousandths of an inch, you'll end up with something like 65 horsepower at the wheels, uh, 47 thousandths of an inch, um, 84 horsepower at the wheels, uh, 67 thousandths of an inch is where it starts to get entertaining. 165 horsepower at the wheels. And if we go for something like uh, 33 thousandths of an inch, but if we put eight of them in, we end up with about 420 horsepower across the engine or about 355 horsepower at the wheels. So all of this stuff is already done for you. There's a whole bunch of formulas to determine the nitrous pressure versus the diameter of the fogger and the diameter of the jet that's installed inside the fogger in order to make how much power at the wheels. Okay, so that's actually gone a little longer than I expected. There's a fair bit to the nitrous system. So what we're gonna do is break this episode into two parts. The second part that I'll start doing right now, it'll be out shortly, is all about our nitrous control strategy and how to set one of these things up so the engine keeps on running. <laughs> 